Good day, girls and boys. I trust you all are well and safe at home. Today, we are going to start our new practical application. This application uses Microsoft Excel. In class, we use Microsoft uh, Office 2016. You may ask yourself why we use uh, spreadsheets versus Microsoft Word. Spreadsheets are used to create budgets, invoices. Your teachers may use them to capture your term marks and calculate your term marks as well as your averages. They, you or your teachers or anyone for that matter may use a spreadsheet to create visual aids, which is your charts to compare various sets of data. In order to go into a spreadsheet application, all we have to do is, in Greater Photo, you can do this on your desktop. You right click, you choose new, and then you go down to Microsoft Excel Worksheets. When this appears, all you have to do thereafter is rename the file. Because this is our first application, I'm gonna call it my first application. Sorry. Okay, once that's done, you are used to the screen where you will see your date modifier, the type, the size. Then all we do is we open that file. Okay, so you'll see your spreadsheet in here. Now the first screen, this whole thing here is actually called a workbook. Inside the workbook, we can get multiple worksheets. At the moment, by default, we have sheet one. Then you'll see this plus sign, which means we can add in a new worksheet. If you click it, you will get sheet two, sheet three, and you can continue in that manner, depending on how many worksheets you require. With the sheets, let's go to sheet one. In sheet one, we don't have to call it sheet one. By default, it's named sheet one. We can also rename it. So we can right click and we can choose rename. And because we've completed term one thus far and your teacher has um, recorded and captured marks for you, right? So we'll call it term one. Right. Now you may ask yourself, what are all these little boxes that we have all over the screen compared to our word processor. These boxes here are called cells. Each cell is made up of a letter and a number. The letters here represents the columns and the rows here represents downwards is the row. So for instance, your house, every house has an address. So for instance, you may live at 5 Robin Street, Doncrest. So that is where we will find you. So if I had to punch in 78 in one of these cells, and I ask you what's the address of the cell, in this case, it will be B5. And if I type in another random number here, 54, that will give me F8. And likewise, you can continue practicing the different cell addresses. So you will see that every single cell address comprises of a column name and a row number. Okay, right. I'm going to delete this now. And we're actually going to start our first worksheet in our workbook. Right. So we're going to go to row A1. That is where A1 is. We're going to highlight from row A1 right up to about K1. And then on the top here, you will see there's an icon that says Merge and Center. Now, why we use this is if you want to type out Vernon Secondary School and we want it to go from one end to the other end without being divided by the uh, column lines, then we would have to merge and center. Okay, so we click that, and in here you will write down, you can put your caps lock on Vernon Secondary School. So let's suppose that we are doing the mark book for your English teacher for term one, okay? So what we're gonna do here, again, is another merge and center. I'm gonna write down English. Term one, grade 10. Okay, now like Microsoft Word, we can bold this, we can underline if we want to underline, but column headings here, there's no need to do that. We can 
pour in some full colors that they would like. The item secondary associated with red and black. So let's make it red and black. Let's change the size to maybe 20. We can also change the font style. Let's use Arial Black. And likewise, we can do that for the next row, which is a row two. And if you want to copy all of that formatting, exactly the same. There's a thing here that's called Format Painter, which you also learned in Microsoft Word. What it does is it just copies the styles that were used in the previous one and click over and there we go. Okay, that we use the Format Painter to save time. Okay. Thereafter, for each one of these, we can now start our mark book. So we can go here to the first um, available cell, which is A3. And every child normally has a register number. So I'm just going to call it NO in short. Thereafter, the child will have a surname, a name, and you can add in the mark. So say supposedly the children wrote the first test, well, test one, and the test was out of 50. And then they wrote another test, which we're gonna call test two. Sorry about that, test two. And that was also out of 50. Then the teacher wanted to add those both those tests up. So we're gonna have a total, okay. If you preview this file, you will see, you cannot see these cell uh, borders because they are actually invisible. So what we do is we highlight our data or how many rows and cells we think we'll use, but if we don't exactly know it's fine because we can always add on or remove, right? And then you go in here, down arrow. And in this case, I want all my borders, so I'm gonna click all borders, right? Then if I look at this, it looks a bit cramped up, so I need to widen my columns. So if I look, go to surname, and surname belongs to column B, and I can expand my column. So let's leave it on 12.14. 12, uh, 12 Likewise with name, for uniformity, we'll leave it as the same thing. For the test mark, right, it's normally gonna be shorter in terms of size. So I'm gonna leave it on 5.29 or so. And likewise with the next one, All right? And likewise with total. Okay, then here you can bold your headings like Microsoft Word again, bold them, you can center them, you can even add color, like for number and surname, you can full color in here because those are just details. So you can separate that from your actual data. So let's put test one in a different color so it doesn't cause confusion. And it's easy for you to look so that you can analyze the data, right? So let's make it another color. And then test two, you can make it another color. And your teacher wants to be able to look at the total uh, very easily, so we can also add some color for the total so it highlights nicely. So let's put another color in there. Right, let's make it yellow. Okay, now if you look at the data for the 50s, they, they are on the right hand side. So let's say we wanted all our data for our marks to be centralized. And then we can just go here to our alignment and click on center. And then we wanted our surname and name and our number data these three columns to be on the left hand side. So we're going to line, highlight all of them and click on left. Then we're just going to use an example. Say there's five children in the class. So your teacher will type out one, two, and okay, five is easy because you can just go three, four, five. But if you are doing all the learners in BSS, then obviously it will take time to type out these numbers. So there must be an easier way of doing this. So all we're going to do is you highlight the one and two, and you go to the corner, right corner, and you'll see there's a dark plus sign that appears. And then you're gonna drag that down. You will see it's numbers with you. It says three, four, five. Because I said five learners, we're gonna leave it at that point, right? And you can bold this. Okay. Then I'm gonna use five 
uh, random names. But now I see I've got a little problem here because the first child is going to clash with the total number of marks. So that's not going to work. So I'm going to go back here to A4. I want that to drop a bit. So I'm going to right click here. And I'm going to try and fix that. Click on insert. Right. And then I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to paste it in there. Okay, so that fixed that problem. So, and here, we might talk to the format painter. Click on the format painter, drag it down there. Right, click on the format painter there and drag it out. Again, you will notice that format painter will not take the number, it will only take the formatting of the previous cell. Okay, so let's use um, the surname. We'll use, I've got my caps lock on. I'm gonna say Lamini, blessing. And then I'm going to have um, surname Black, Joe. Then I'm going to have Swatch, Forbes. Then I'm going to have Louis, uh, Samuel. Then I'm going to have um, Naidu. Um, yeah. All right, then I can enter according to the script, your teacher will capture the marks. For now, I'm just going to use random marks out of 50. So we've got 43 for the first test. Uh, then we can go to the second test for the same child. Below that, I'm going to give the child 43. Then the next child, 23, and so on. Okay. I'm going to fill in the data for the next one. Thank <laughs> you.